Good evening. I'd like to call this evening's Tacoma Public School Board meeting to order. And let's begin, as always, with a flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, President Ushka? I'm here. Vice President Cobb? Here. Director Vial? Here. Director Hines? Here. Director Winskill? Here. Thank you. Can I have a motion for adoption of the agenda, please? I move adoption. Second. Motion's been moved and seconded. Are there any qu questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing none, motion passes 5-0. Item number five is a public hearing on the 2016-17 budget extension. Um, there's a note to, oh, I'm trying to infer a URL, excuse me. There is a link on the public, on the electronic thing that will take you to the budget extension request details. Do we have a way of indicating to the public verbally where they would navigate to to find that information? Main website, Kevin, am I on? If you go right to the um, main website page, on the left-hand column, right under the main headline, it says, take survey and tell us your thoughts on the Tacoma Public Schools budget. Mm -hmm. And if you click right there, it gives you budget community survey, it gives you the proposed allocations in the general fund, the 2017-18 budget draft proposals uh, around each of the, uh, the uh, five strategic plans as well. Okay, thank you, so that, that'll all be found there. Um, so we have a couple different uh, public hearings that we're doing right now. First is for the 16-17 budget extension. That'll be followed for the 17-18 budget. Um, and then we'll do the normal public comment after recognition of staff, students, and community. So to start with, if you would like to testify regarding the 16-17 budget extension, please, please complete a citizen's request to speak card, which is located at the back of the auditorium, and submit the card to the school board secretary. The superintendent will call your name when it's your turn to address the board. Please speak into the microphone. You'll have up to three minutes to share your testimony. Do we have any speakers on the? No. Could you briefly describe what the budget extension is for the good of the public? Yes, this is a revision to the 2016-17 budget. Uh, we've noticed that our expenditures were running closer to the maximum amount of authority that we've been given, and we wanted to provide in anticipation that we could potentially overspend, <coughs> that we would not overspend our uh, authority. We, as law, by law, we're not allowed to do that. So this provides us with a little bit of cushion just in case we don't actually expect or, I mean, we're just anticipating, we don't expect to overspend our current expenditure authorities of 406 million, roughly. Great, thank you. And seeing as there's no speakers, I'll move on to the next item, but I will remind the public that they're welcome to give uh, feedback via the website or via email or in written form at any time. So item number 5.2 is the 2017-18 budget, and likewise, I believe that you would find the 17-18 budget development website on the front of the website on the left-hand side under budget survey. Uh, so if you would like to testify regarding the 17-18 budget, please complete a citizen request to speak card, which is still located at the back of the auditorium, and give it to the school board secretary. Uh, Superintendent Santorum will call your name when it's your turn to address the school board. Please do speak into the microphone so everybody can hear you. And you'll have up to three minutes to share your testimony. There are no speakers. So there are no speakers on the, uh, I believe this is our second public hearing on the 1718 budget. Again, if you have comments or questions that you would like to make, please do go to the website or use email or dial the phone or write a letter. We'd love to have your feedback. Please. 
the, just as a um, as you go to the website, it does break out the budgets according to the, the board strategic plan goals. And so uh, as communities interested in understanding what are their efforts towards certain benchmarks, initiatives that gives more detail of how much money is being spent to there. And then in response to the idea, of, so what is our plans to increase achievement based on these resources? As we bring you uh, your monitoring reports, uh, they, very, um, they will articulate, um, here's the data, here's what we've learned, and here's our next steps, which would include our uh, increased efforts in some areas, or next steps maybe potentially even to reduce efforts based on successes. Thank you very much. Okay, this brings us to item number six, which is the recognition of staff, students, and community. We don't have any recognition at item stay, which isn't to say there aren't lots of recognizable people throughout our community that help us do this hard work every day. So shout out to all of our partners throughout Tacoma and the greater Pierce County area. Item number seven is members of the public wishing to address the board. Uh, we encourage members uh, to publicly participate with us and your input is very much appreciated. If you'd like to address the school board, I'll bet you can guess the steps because I've only mentioned them a few couple, couple times. Um, uh, that being said, uh, do we have any for public comment yes, this evening? Yes, we have you. one. Um, Guy Snell regarding Sammy's Pizza License. Yep. And again, there is a timer for three minutes to speak. You'll get a notification that when you have one minute left and when you have 30 seconds left, I believe. I'll try to meet that. Uh, thank you for taking the time. This is my second time here, so it's not really my forte. It's not outside my comfort zone. So I'll try and be brief and not hash over some of the detail or the history. Um, I think I've met all of you except for maybe you, Catherine. Um, so I'm gonna, I think that you guys are aware that Sammy's Pizza across from Lowell, we've had a lot of frustration. I've had a lot of frustration over the last five years. Um, my goal here today is to hopefully get some traction. Um, who, do I, who can I talk to, who can I meet with that we can, pro that we, maybe we can come to some sort of resolution. Um, a lot's changed in the last five years, and recently, um, Sammy's Pizza was issued a license by the Liquor Control Board. And that was because um, we applied, we met all the criteria, and it's my understanding there were zero objections. So currently, I hold a license to serve beer and wine in a restaurant, because that's what we are. Um, I've never really understood why this seems to be such a, a battle with the district because as somebody told me once recently, if somebody that I was really appreciated talking to, somebody that you guys know, who I think at one point was a school board member, but he said to me, he said, really boils down to one thing. It's not against the law to be near a school and serve beer and wine or alcohol, and it's happening everywhere. Um, it just, I just can't do it. And so my frustration over the years has been trying to understand why that is and what can I do. And in fact, the other time I came to one of these meetings, it got me a meeting with Carla. And that's again kind of why I'm here today because it was really the only way I felt like I could get the attention so that I could meet with somebody and say, what can we do to, to figure something out? Um, again, it's easy for me to digress because there's a lot of history and I have a lot of stuff inside, a lot of frustration. But again, I want to lose sight track of my goal here, which is I do feel I've tre been treated differently. I think, again, there's some recent things that have happened. It's my understanding that the district, who originally over the years, told me that they object to every applicant. Um, I was told that there were some liability issues there, which I was never substantiated. Anybody I talked to from legal counsel said there is no liability. In fact, I even approached my insurance people who said, I can't insure you for something where there's no liability. So you can see where that would be frustrating when the district's telling me they can't work with me because of that. My understanding in 2017, the district didn't object to a recent applicant in the Proctor District. So that just validates the case that I'm like, wh why is this so different? Why are other people of sale near a school? In the Proctor District, there's six, eight, ten businesses serving alcohol near schools, but for some reason, Sammy's Pizza can't. I've been there five years now already. I think we're a good neighbor. We're good for the community, and we're currently selling alcohol, and Lowell families are coming over praising us, saying, we are so excited for you. So I really just don't understand why we're still here, why the district objected after the deadline. The time is up, and thank you so much for your comments. So, Carla, are there any other speakers for this evening? No. 
Okay, we're going to move on to the next agenda item. Thank you so much. The next item on the agenda is item number eight, which is the superintendent's report. 8.1 is the whole Educator Academy. Our presenter is the Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, Marie Verhar, with the whole Educator Academy College. So uh, on behalf of the superintendent, uh, the team put together uh, uh, this really unique event started this year. Um, for the first time, and Assistant Superintendent Marie Verhar and uh, Assistant Superintendent Lisa Nolan, uh, we all, the team collaborated and we have this premise around the whole child and supporting the whole child. And it takes a whole educator to support the whole child. And so in our best efforts, uh, Marie uh, put together a, a, a conference for folks, and she's here to give you a little bit of a highlight. Yes, we had approximately 600 teachers attend our very first ever whole educator conference. It was held at Mount Tahoma High School. It was last week on Wednesday and Thursday. And we had approximately 100 and some sessions, all put on by the amazing educators of Tacoma Public Schools. So teachers, district staff, many, many, many sessions were held, ranging from topics around serving highly capable in the regular classroom to ELL students, um, ELA, every imaginable topic, special education, inclusion, Marilyn Friend was there. We had two dynamic keynote speakers that kicked off and then ended. We had wonderful uh, food. Teachers were just impressed with the way they were treated. They felt like it was a, a, a conference that held at a national level. It was so well done. And the input that we got, the feedback that we got from the folks who attended was very, very well received. And we just wanted to take a moment to share with you. There's a few pictures there. Jamad Canley was our opening keynote. And uh, again, just a great, great event for Tacoma and our students. And we just want to tip our hats and thank many of our staff members who made this possible, who put in, who began planning last November to bring this event for our staff. Our second day, we had local area food trucks, so we had community partners involved. Community partners attended on the second day and actually sat at tables with teachers, having conversations about the work of our community and how important Tacoma Public Schools is in that partnership. So again, just wanna say thank you to the team who put this on and uh, attribute, attribute the teachers who attended. I think it was a great event and a great opportunity to kick off the year and inspire folks to serve every student every day. You may uh, see out in, into our community a flash of orange, uh, and so you'll see a new movement that's been sparked by our HR team around the whole educator and investing in those that invest in our children. Um, and so there's a lot of energy and excitement. We will make sure we get you some orange uh, to, to proudly display because you too are whole educators as we move forward. So thank you to the team and uh, look forward to your orange coming. Coming soon. I just had one question. I looked at this picture and I couldn't figure out what that was in the top left. What is that? Oh yeah. Oh, that's uh, on the, the iPhone. The app, Marie. Uh, it looks pretty neat. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could give you specifics I couldn't what as to what that was, but there were there were several different sessions. We not only did we have many sessions around academic instruction type things, but there are also multiple sessions around engaging students with technology. So I think that was one of the game based sessions that we offered, showing students ways to integrate bring your own device types of activities into the classroom. I wish I could give you specifics on it, but it was pretty exciting. Okay. Um, so yeah. A holographic app. Really? The voice behind the screen. The voice behind the screen. It says it's a holographic app. A holographic so. app. So there you go. The wizard has spoken. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments from the board? Just one comment, Director I, you know, we've been talking about, you know, for the last three or four years about our whole child and taking care of our kids. And I think this is awesome that we've also recognized that we need to take care of our teachers mm -hmm. and our educators that 
you know, they can't make our kids whole if we don't help keep them whole. And at least I know that this was kind of your brainchild and uh, congratulations on a job well done. Great, thank you. Other comments? Wonderful, thank you so much. Thanks so much for the great work from everybody. Okay. Item number nine is the consent agenda. Uh, the consent agenda includes a lot of business items that need to happen to keep the uh, district operating in terms of paying paychecks and approving uh, travel for conferences and whatnot. It's all information that all the board members have received in advance and had a chance to look at and ask any questions. I tell you all that because I'm gonna ask for a motion to approve all of this in one fell swoop. Um, and I want you to know that we've done our homework. That being said, is there a motion for approval? I, I move approval. Second. The <coughs> consent agenda has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments, uh, Director? Yeah, I have, a, um, I have a question or a comment or, <coughs> or both. <laughs> um, so I'm looking at personnel. We have many, many people being hired this time of year, substitutes and all sorts of other um, people. Do we notify people if they have if they've applied, interviewed, and not gotten a job, do we notify them in a few days so they can look other places? Yes, yes, that is part of our practice. Okay, and how long is it taking these days for substitutes to be signed up once they come? It depends if they are already certificated or non-certificated. If they're certificated, it's a, a pretty quick process, and we do have a KPI around that, and if they're not certificated and applying to be an emergency substitute, that takes longer because we connect with and work with OSPI on that. Okay, so how long, if you're certificated, uh, roughly how long does it take? The entire hiring mm -hmm. process for a sub is, uh, the hiring process itself may take merely days, but then to get them in for the fingerprint and orientation, that's another process that could take a couple of weeks, depending yeah, so on availability of the <coughs> staff member. <coughs> Do we expedite that at all, like hire someone uh, like for August to expedite that because I know people have talked about how lengthy it is in Tacoma to get a job like that. Yeah, uh, we we do have um, we do expedite as a matter of fact, and um, as we've shared in our previous KPIs, our data reports, where our hiring time is is faster than the national average when compared to other schools, and we remain steady with that and we operate typically within a 14-day hiring, but it could take as long as 28 days depending upon when the fingerprints are issued back to us. Okay. And, and we expedite by hosting a weekly orientation as opposed to in the past. It may have been every other week. And sometimes we offer one-on-one -on -one orientation depending on the need to get someone into a classroom right away. Um, so we're, we're constantly working on continuous improvement, but monitoring our data closely so that we can get people into classrooms quickly. Okay, thank you. I just want to make a comment on that. I know that you've made vast improvements in that KPI mm -hmm. and hiring process, and I know, know many organizations outside of small private businesses that can make a hire that quickly. I think we probably have a lot of legacy memory in Tacoma mm -hmm. on the time it used to take, oh, and yeah. it probably takes us letting people know what that timeline is and, and re restating that multiple times before we get to a place that people understand that we are expediting those things. And I, I do think that if people have exceptions to that, they should bring it to HR's attention. I feel fully confident that they're gonna address that as quickly as they can, um, which was not always true, not something I would say, but it's certainly something I'm confident saying today. So, anyway. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other comments? Only one, one comment on the, on the substitute hiring, having been through that, you know, one of the things that we do because we deal with kids is that we have to do a much more extensive background investigation on all of our employees. And I remember going through that, going down and getting fingerprinted and, uh, and so on. So it may take a little longer for us to hire someone and, per, and other school districts this too than perhaps it does someone in a different, say, city of Tacoma where they are not dealing with children because of state law. So I think that from what I can tell, Lisa and her crew have and having gone through it as, a, as an emergency cert once, and then after that you just automatically take it down and get renewed and that's not that big a deal, that they have really, really com compressed that time frame. I think when I did it, it was like five or six weeks and it isn't even that close from now from what I understand. And that was a long time to get hired. So, uh, you know, just from an anecdotal situation, knowing what it was like 10 years ago as to what it is now, and people are saying they come in and they get treated wonderfully and 
get out of there and get a job and are very happy to be with us. We so definitely want to fix success. Like you said, we're doing great, great work over there and getting it processed. But I just wanted to make that point about that we are very cognizant of keeping our kids safe and not having people in our classrooms that should not be there. And that does make our hiring processes across the board longer than perhaps it would be in other organizations. Thank you. Um, before before we leave the personnel, the consent agenda, I wanted to make sure we had an opportunity to, m to meet Heidi Maynard. Heidi, mm -hmm. Heidi is here tonight for Renee, but she's also, of which, tell me what your title is, Heidi. Deputy General Counsel. Deputy General Counsel. And so I just wanted to make sure that the public and the board has an opportunity to see her face to face. Thanks, Heidi. She's done great work mm -hmm. already. Wonderful and welcome. Thank you. Any other for comments on the consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor of the consent agenda, please uh, uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing none, motion passes, 5-0. Mm. Number 10 is policy matters. 10.1 uh, is 32-10, non-discrimination of students. This is the second reading. And I believe general counsel will read this motion. As we presented um, policy 3210, non-discrimination of students for second read, um, that policy has been revised um, with one change, and that is to uh, substitute the word diverse for minority in two instances. Okay, it's been moved for adoption. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there a I'll question? Second well, it. Yeah. Who moved it? Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll move adoption of the policy as amended. Second. It's been moved by Director Vial, seconded by Vice <coughs> President Cobb. Are there questions or comments from the board on the second reading of uh, policy 3210, please? I, oh, if I might, I should have a Cobb. comment. I, I, you know, Vice oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I just wanted to say that I appreciate the change. Mm, that, that I was going I appreciate you bringing it up, even though I haven't been able to be here. I watched last week and I to was in total agreement. So that's a much better word and really f reflects what we are as a district now, not what we were 10, 15 years ago. Thank you, Andrea, for that. Did you have further comments? I'm sorry. No, just that I wanted to agree with that change as I think it's uh, It's a good one. Yeah, it really reflects in a sure. better way who we are and what we do. Absolutely. Seeing no other questions or comments from the board, all those in favor of passing a, uh, policy 3210 on non-discrimination of students, please indicate by saying aye. 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 <coughs> all those opposed? Seeing none, motion passes 5-0. I don't, I don't think we actually read the, I, the item. We're, we're, we're fitzing over here, so we're trying to figure out whether we did or not, but I don't think we actually read the item. It, no, was, it was it was it uh, was paraphrased, but it was pretty darn okay. close to what I'm looking at on my page. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good enough for government okay. work. Good enough for that. Okay. Uh, item ten point two is policy number thirty two fifteen: sexual harassment of students prohibited. Move adoption of uh, sexual harassment of students prohibited policy thirty two fifteen, which is a new policy. I'll move approval. Second. Items been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, seeing none, motion passes, 5-0. Item number 10.3, policy number 5265, non-discrimination of staff and affirmative action. Yes, um, I move adoption of 5265, non-discrimination of staff and affirmative action. I'll move approval. Second. The item's been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> Seeing none, motion passes 5-0. Item number 10.4 is 5266, sexual harassment of district staff prohibited. Uh, move adoption of revised policy 5266, mm -hmm. sexual harassment of district staff prohibited. I'll move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 5-0. Moving on to item number 11 is the quarterly financial update. There is no quarterly financial update, but you can find reports uh, at the district website at www.tacomaschools.org slash finance slash pages slash financial dash reports ASPX. 
Item number 12 is curriculum and instruction. There are no curriculum instruction items this evening. Item number 13 brings us to business matters. 13.1 is the approval of the agreement between Tacoma School District 10 and Pierce Transit. The Chief Financial Officer recommends that the Board of Directors approve the agreement with Pierce Transit for 3,525 ORCA passport cards in the amount of $498.96 for the 17-18 school year. And if I could just make one brief editorial comment. Uh, these, these passes are used for the IDEA Sammy and Soda students for the transportation provided to them, uh, as well as a pilot program that we've been doing with all of our high schools to allow for better transportation access. Uh, and I know that this is a question that's asked of me every year by Director Winskill, and that is that we do negotiate a discounted rate for these passes. A normal youth rate would be $36 and we get to pay $11.28 just from a volume discount perspective, so thank you. Just point of clarification, that's $400,000. Yeah, yeah. What did I say? Card. You said four thousand. Oh, excuse me. I, yeah, I thought I said four hundred and ninety-eight thousand dollars <laughs> and ninety-six cents. I <laughs> no, I heard her say four hundred. Yeah, so I did. Point too. of clarification for okay. the community. A little more than four hundred. We, we got take, a really good rate, it. but it yeah. wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> We're working towards that four hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, going to yeah. say, can we ask that that be the number next year? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. We can ask anything. I know. <laughs> did we move approval? I know. No. Huh? no. Okay, I move it. Great. <laughs> Second. All right, items have been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments from the board? Vice President Cobb. Can you clarify for me um, who, again, is including here? Because I read the description and it says Sammy Soda, Idea, Raymond Hall, um, Willie Stewart Academy, and then it just says all high schools. Correct. So you said it's this is a continuation of a pilot. So it's all high schools, but what um, kind of percent? I mean, 3,500 is not going to cover all students at all of our comprehensive high schools, but. Um, how is this number, the 3,500, arrived at? With Correct. So uh, the Sammy Soda and IDEA students make up uh, at least half of those passes. So it's like 1,500 to, to 1,800 passes in total. And then the remainder are for some of the other schools. And uh, we did a pilot program last year where we offered 1,000 passes to a couple of schools to just start out with as a in lieu of the transportation that we currently provide. So if a bus service doesn't work out for you or you live within a zone or you want to go to a school of choice, we offered this pass as an option for you. And we are able to claim back some of the expenses associated with that depending on the type of service that we're providing. And uh, that was done, I think it was at Lincoln and Mount Tahoma. And then we expanded it to all the high schools in January. So the 1,000 passes we're anticipating moving up to 2,000 passes this year, roughly, maybe 2,500. Okay. So the expansion, the, even with those 2,000, is it just based, the, the students get the pass in response to an identified need for the pass? Correct. Or, okay. Right, uh, that allows them to participate in before and after school activities in a different way. It provides for school choice options in a different way. Okay. With the idea of more students want the pass, then we'll approach that as we go but we looked at what our participation rate was in the pilot and then we're trying to be fiduciary responsible by saying okay so what is it that we anticipate will be the growth we imagine and we we dream about um, a, a world where any kid in Tacoma could get, jump on any bus they want and go to any museum they want and go to any park they want and, and so we're working in that direction but we're not quite there yet I have a question do we let the um, graduating eighth graders from when they're getting ready to pick their high schools that these passes might be available. And the reason I'm asking that question, we had a family just moved into our neighborhood who had a uh, son was in the IB program at Giadroni and wanted to go to Foss. And one of the reasons they moved was to, so that they would be in the Foss neighborhood. And do we let the kids at Giadroni know that the passes would be available for the kids that live in that neighborhood that have been in the IB program, say in when they're picking their high school in like January or February, whenever we do that? We did a marketing campaign about the passes. Mm -hmm. We definitely can continue to spread the word in different ways, so we'll look at that as well. Okay, I would appreciate that, particularly when we're trying to get FOSS's enrollment, and we do have the IB schools that are spread a bit mm -hmm. around that let the kids know like we used to when my kids went there, if they didn't need it, that the member of the kids from the east side came to FOSS when they got the passes and let them know that if you want to go, uh, into the IB program at Henry Foss that there is an ORCA card to qualify available for you. It's definitely part of the Foss staff uh, recruitment 
uh, plan to let this, the kids know that are interested, and so it does get out Good. there, but we, we'll work for different ways to help spread the word. Good. Thank you. Appreciate it. I have a quick question. Oh, go ahead, uh, Director. Uh, no, I just had a comment. I saw the gleam in Dr. Garcia's eyes. Um, I, too, share the vision of district-wide access to public transportation. And uh, when we had our joint board meeting not too long ago with the uh, Parks Board, uh, am I letting the cat out of the bag on the golden ticket? I mean, there's some things in the works to try to expand access to some attractions in the greater Tacoma area. It just jumped out. How's that? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And wow. so as we're in the business of trying to remove barriers, if we're giving kids and families greater access, but they may not have the transportation to get there, that's a problem. So I, uh, and I also appreciate that we're doing this, we're taking a measured approach. So we're not doing, creating an opportunity for every student at once. We're being data driven. How is it being utilized? And I like that there's a targeted marketing campaign so that folks are aware of options and can make a decision that's in the best interest of their family. Is this the full ORCA pass? Will it allow them to also get on the Sounder train ferries, or is this just specifically for bus service in Pierce County? I believe it's, I'll get back in the exact detail. Um, I think it's limited to the Pierce County. I think it's Pierce Transit. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't allow kids necessarily to uh, go up to like Seattle or the other extended areas. I, okay. I would encourage you to look into that. I do believe that my daughter used it for just that purpose um, because I was tremendously nervous about her taking a bus by herself to Seattle. She was fine, you know, but it was my job to worry and I did it well. Yeah, I, I will <laughs> clarify. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Could I? I, go you. ahead. Um, sure. I just know at University of Washington, because I've had grandchildren there the last few, five years, four years. Um, they do give them an ORC pass. Every student gets one. They can do the Sounder train. They can do train uh, buses all over uh, Snohomish County, Pierce County, King County, and maybe even the Thurston County. So mm -hmm. it's good for everything. You bet. It's, it's a great. It's, great it's wonderful. It teaches them about the system and. It opens tremendous opportunities mm -hmm. for extended learning opportunities with our partners. Um, whether they go to the clubs, the YMCA's, the Boys and Girls Clubs, the Metro Parks. Um, with the Tide Flat certification, so it's it's opening new doors. Mm -hmm. So my question is about data on usage. Do we end up getting general data on usage? Do we know I if kids so. are just using this to go back and forth to school if they're using mm -hmm. it more? When we say general data, we mean general data. Okay. <laughs> so we know number of rides and like to and from. We can't look at an individual student's card and say what that student is doing. Uh, Pierce Transit won't turn that data I, I would, I wouldn't want to have that data. Right. I guess if we took the number of students with the card and we assume usage. that for every school day there's two rides and that's normal, what's the percentage above that use? Yeah, and, and I don't know that off the top of my head, but yeah. we can do a Friday report that prepares information on, and I, we have in the past, but we can update it with you know what our final numbers were mm -hmm. for last year. Yeah, if it's readily available, yeah. that would be anything Absolutely. to look at. Okay, thanks. Any other questions or comments? Okay. okay, this has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. Item number 13.2 is the approval of interlocal agreement with Columbia Virtual Academy 2017-18. The Deputy Superintendent recommends the Board of Directors approve this annual interlocal agreement with Columbia Virtual Academy for the 2017-18 school year. Move approval. Second. The item's been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the board? Okay, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing none, motion passes, 5-0. Item 13.3 is the approval of the increase for ProCare Therapy, TSD contract 17-065, addendum number one. The Deputy Superintendent on behalf of the Assistant Superintendent of Student Support Services recommends the Board of Directors approve the increase of the ProCare Therapy Incorporated contract of the 2016-17 school year funding source special education fund. Uh, move approval. Second. Items by moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the board? Okay. Uh, I don't, um, Director Winsky. Yeah, just the fiscal, what's the fiscal implication of this? Yeah. Sorry, I was texting and saying we need to do a board it's report. It's $225,000. <laughs> the increase is $40,000 to the total uh, okay. contract of 225000 Thank you. Seeing no other comments, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, seeing none, motion passes 5-0. 
Item 13.4 is the approval of contract TSD-18-042, College Board College Readiness and Success. The Deputy Superintendent recommends the Board of Directors approve the College Board's College Readiness and Success contract TSD-18042 from July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2018 in the amount of $219,437,000. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the board? Yeah. If I may make an editorial. Absolutely. These are the kind of initiatives that you have taken bold action in helping provide out of local levy dollars and providing access that is not universally across the state. And so uh, I know that this has really been a significant thing uh, for kids, for educators, everything from credits down to uh, AP exams, to SAT exams, to PSAT exams, and has changed the culture in Tacoma. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And I will actually be asking some questions about that when we go through levy review, because we have done tremendous strides. We're making good use of that levy money mm -hmm. for progress and innovation that improves the lives of the people that we serve. Mm -hmm and restrictions or reductions on that could have, I'm not gonna say say what kind of results they could have because I don't know off the top of my head, that's part of my question. But okay. uh, that being said, uh, if there's no further comments, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, seeing none, motion passes, 5-0. Item number 13.5 is the approval of interlocal agreement TSD-18-061 between the Puget Sound Education District and Tacoma School District number 10. Deputy Superintendent recommends that the Board of Directors approve this interlocal agreement TSD 18061 in the amount of $15,000 between the Puget Sound Educational Service District and the Tacoma School District Number 10 for the period of July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2018. I move approval. Second. Items been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the Board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing none, motion passes 5-0. <coughs> Item 13.6 is the approval of Metro Parks Tacoma Sparks Program and Tacoma Public Schools three-year interlocal agreement. The Assistant Superintendent of K-12 Support on behalf of the Executive Director of Secondary Education recommends that the Board of Directors approve the three-year interlocal agreement between Metro Parks Tacoma Sparks Program and Tacoma Public Schools Funding Source Secondary Education. I move approval. Second. <coughs> Items been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments from the board? Vice President Cobb. Is this a continuation of a program or is this new? Um, we've had it, I'm not sure how long we've had it, but it is renewal. Okay. Quite yeah. a few years, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank uh -huh. you. Further right. questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing none, motion passes 5 0. Item number 13.7 is the approval of Pierce County Human Services contract. Number TSD-18030. The Deputy Superintendent on behalf of the Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning recommends the Board of Directors approve the Pierce County Human Services Birth to Three Early Intervention Services Contract for the 2017-18 school year funding source special education budget. Uh, move approval. Second. Items been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments from the board? Director Hines. Not a question. Under fiscal implication, it said the district would be obligated to provide payment to Pierce County Human Services for the services rendered consistent with the terms of the attached contract for services, but there was no attached contract. Yeah. We can get you the attached contract. We could delay the, the vote, but it is. Do you have a sense of what the fiscal impact would be? It's mm -hmm. a pass through of dollars from the yeah. state. Mm -hmm. They give the money to us, and then we have to contract mm -hmm. out the services. Is it a reimbursement? No. Services are rendered no. and we get? No, <laughs> um, We get to take an in. This is the right one, right, Joe? Yeah. We get to take an indirect on the um, revenues for it. it. And we used to offer the services and we used to receive the money for it. And then the state changed the requirements. Now we have to contract out for the services. We have to maintain some of those services internally at a cost to the district. And then the money goes right out the door to I'm gonna say DES, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we take an indirect for the administrative mm -hmm. services we provide and it's not enough to cover the costs that we have to continue incurring though. So it's it's a loser for us. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Other other questions. Got a question. Uh, Director Vial. Is, are these the services that Mary Bridge provides to the early 
intervention programs for the uh, birth to three stuff? These are the birth to three services that are provided through um, Hope Sparks, Center for our Children's Therapy Center, um, Birth to Three Developmental Center, and a step ahead, Pierce County. Okay, so, so are some of those at Mary Bridge? Uh, no, they're not at Mary Bridge. Okay, because I know Mary Bridge provides some um, programs for speech therapy, early intervention. Right, those aren't usually funded through the birth to three services. Okay, I, I, was, I thought they weren't, but I wanted to clarify that there are different pots of money that do fund some of these early learning, early intervention yes. programs. Okay, because I know the Mary Bridge program then feeds into our speech and hearing programs that we have like at Downing and so on. Right, we get lots of referrals for them. Right, okay, thank you. This is very interesting the way this passes through and goes from one municipality to another entity mm -hmm. and then gets divided about among not for profits. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't seem like the most efficient thing in the world. Um, and that's the only comment I'll make on it. Are there other Director Vial? No, I was just comment? going to say I thought you did it well and you did it politically correct without using the P word. <laughs> yeah, so there we are. Um, that being said, it's still necessary services that are of tremendous value to the people mm -hmm. that we serve and we want to see it happen. So all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. Item 13.8 is the approval of the Puget Sound mm -hmm. Joint Purchasing Cooperative Interlocal Agreement. Yes, the Chief Operating Officer recommends that the Board of Directors and the Superintendent to sign the Puget Sound Joint Purchasing Cooperative Interlocal Agreement. Funding source, nutrition services. A move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have questions or comments from the Board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, seeing none, motion passes 5-0. Item 13.9 is the approval of USDA foods, freight, and processing fees for the 2007-18 school year. The Chief Operating Officer recommends that the Board of Directors approve the USDA foods, freight, and processing fees of $375,000 for the 2017-18 school year. Funding source, nutrition services. I move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, seeing none, motion passes 4 0. 5 0, excuse me. Item 1310 is the approval to purchase food and supplies from Food Services of America, FSA, to the Puget Sound Joint Purchasing Cooperative, QS PSJPC, for the school meal program. The Chief Operating Officer recommends that the Board of Directors approve the purchase of food and supplies from the Food Services of America through the Puget Sound Joint Purchasing Cooperative for the 2017-18 school meal program. Funding source, Nutrition Services. I move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments from the Board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing none, motion passes 5-0. Item 13.12 is the approval of resolution number 2020. Oh. Cannot forget the milk, very important <laughs> every day for all of our students. Item 13.11, approval. Pardon? Oh, I, don't, I don't really care for milk either. <laughs> um, approval to purchase milk for the 17, 18, and 18, 19 school meal programs. The Chief Operating Officer recommends that the Board of Directors approve the purchase of dairy products from Metal Sweet farms for the 2017-18 and 2018-19 school year. Funding source, Nutrition Services. I move approval. Second. The motion's been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing none, motion passes 5-0. 13.12 is the approval of resolution number 2027, petition of the Office of the <coughs> Superintendent of Public Instruction for a 1617 budget extension. The Chief Financial Officer recommends that the Board of Directors adopt resolution number 2027 providing for the extension of the 2016 2017 budget. Is there a motion for approval? Uh, move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Questions or comments from the board? Yes. Director Winskill. Yeah, so um, I've never seen this on an agenda before. So, how, why is this happening? What are the uh, what are the expenditures that have caused this to possibly be a problem? So 
So when we do our financial forecasting, we're looking to see how close we're coming to our total budgeted expenditures. And the law says that we cannot exceed our total budgeted expenditures. In years past, and quite a number of years past, we're generally running between you know, 94 and 98%. I'm going to be really rough about it. And so there's really not a risk of overexpending our budget. This year, we're running more to the 96 to 98 percentile. And it's just a little too close for comfort for us. And, and so it's more of an anticipation than it is that this is going to be an actuality. And because the, our policy and the law says that we can't overexpend our budget, we're building in additional capacity to address that. Um, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily be in a position likely to exceed what we had planned for. And, and we do want to target spending our current dollars on current students and benefiting the students that are in our system. So our expectation is that we're going to run a tighter budget. And we haven't been able to do that in the past. The better we get at doing that, the more often you're likely going to see something like this occur. I think that this is probably the wave of the future around how we do our budgeting. At the end of the year, you'd mm -hmm. likely begin to see this. So have we been monitoring this? I mean, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, like this just, I just read this today and didn't know this was an issue until I read this today. So I've seen some of our expenditures over the last few months. We've spent a lot of local dollars on technology, for instance, and it seems like maybe that is a way we could have cut back if we thought that this was going to be an impact. Um, you know, there's certain, a lot of administrators hired, new positions created, and um, I just feel like along the way we should have maybe anticipated this a little better. And I'd like to know what would happen if we are, um, if we go over uh, the state, what does the state do if we have exceeded our budget? So the state, they don't come out and say, hey, you're going to get, I don't know, I'm really not sure what the state would do. I haven't ever seen them do anything about it. Um, and, and it does happen from time to time across the, the state. I've seen it before. Uh, but internally, our policy says that if I knowingly exceed our budgeted expenditures, that I will immediately forfeit my employment, or any employee that knowingly exceeds the budgeted expenditures will forfeit their employment. And so we just want to protect ourselves from being in that situation. We want to make sure that we're following the law and that we're providing for it. I'm not going to tell you that we are going to ex exceed our budget. And we did talk about this at the budget um, presentation last week. It was the very first slide in our slide deck. And um, what, our, what we do each quarter is run a projection on where we think we're going to end. Our July expenditures were higher than what we anticipated, and that's what pushed us into this position of a little bit higher than where we like to be running. Um, and that's not something I can necessarily control when we're going back and looking in at what's going on in July. We're seeing uh, a higher expenditure trend in July based on things like the My Time Project. And, I, and not the expense of the My Time Project, but the fact that My Time allows us to put expenditures into the system uh, instead of doing it on paper, where paper might take four to six weeks for those expenditures to come in, we're seeing them happen immediately real time. And so that's something that is unusual. It throws our trending off, and we got to see where we're at in August. When we're looking at where we're at in August currently, we're looking to expend somewhere around 400 to 402 million dollars. We're budgeted at 406. So that's where I say that I don't feel like we're going to overexpend. It's just a protective measure. I have a clarifying question. So as a board, we've given you the authority to spend up to a certain level. Correct. Budgets are predictions that then get reconciled with actuals. Correct. And this is, and I'm going to use a technical term, going to give you wiggle room <laughs> in the event because we try to get as close to that 100% as we can. In the event that we go slightly over, this gives you the legal protection that you need to ensure that we're still compliant with the law. That is accurate. All right. Thank you. Director Bayad, do you have a comment as well? Yeah, um, this is good budgeting practice. And I think I'm in a position, having been where I've been in my career, to say that it is. And um, what, uh, what, when you put something like my time in, it, uh, when mainly when you do expenditures and you expect them to be a bit of a lag. And when you put in my time, that changes mm -hmm. your projections and how your, your expenditures, because it's sort of like, when you put something on a credit card, you're not going to pay for it till the end of the month. When you do something like my time, that's an immediate expenditure that's coming out of your bank account right now. It's like using a debit card versus a, 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 a credit card. And that throws off your projections. And, it's think, and for us, you know, we're looking at awfully large numbers. 
now in our budgets, well over $400 million. And to come in around with a less than $5 million uh, per possible projection, that means we're, pretty, we're doing pretty <coughs> darn well. And I totally support this resolution. It covers us with the state. That has been state law for Decades. 50 years in the Budget and Accounting Act. And nobody really had, I ever known has really gotten punished. They've just been told next year do a little better job projecting. But, and that getting us, as Director Hines said, close to expending our dollars that we said we were going to expend on our kids is what we want to do. So I, you know, I, I, I think uh, from what I've seen over the f six years almost that we've been, I've been on this board, and Director Hines has been here too, and Director Eshka, and so, uh, about the way that we do budgeting in this district, we're pretty darn good at it, where we come in and how we've done. So um, I totally support this, and it's not a, in the, in the realm of budget, planning and process from the state level. This is not a big deal. It just simply says, hey, you know, we had some minor tweaks here and there, and we just want to make sure that we're covered and that you could, you're, and you say we're up, we can go over by a certain amount if we do and we're good. And um, that's about it. So thank you. I have a quick question, just to refresh my memory, because I always forget whose fiscal year does yet. What? I feel like this motion is going to be that the, either the the fiscal year is already over or going to mm -hmm. end nearly as, as this meeting does? Yes, yes uh, August 31st. There's okay. 31 days in August, right? <laughs> yeah, just making sure yeah, for that 31st. clarification. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, seeing none, motion passes 5-0. Mm -hmm. Item 13.13, mm -hmm. approval of resolution number 2028, 20, adopting the 1718 budget. The Chief Financial Officer recommends that the Board of Directors adopt Resolution Number 2028, providing for the adoption of the 2017-2018 budget. I'll move approval. Second. The motion's been moved and seconded. Are there questions or comments from the Board? Vice President Cobb. Uh, my question's not consequential to the budget itself, but okay. just from our discussion last week, do you know now um, what percentage of students are served in the highly capable program? If you don't, it's okay. I'll just I don't. Keep. Okay, it's all right. I'll come back to okay. it. Okay. Other questions or comments from the board? Just comment. Uh, Director Bial. Um, awesome job of putting budget together this year. Thank you. And the way that we've moved forward with our strategic plan and tying now the budget to the strategic plan and to the benchmarks, as Dr. Garcia mentioned, I don't know too many school districts across the country that are doing that. So we really now know where we're spending our money. And uh, job well done. Thank you. Further questions or comments from the board? Director Hines. I would just add, uh, we um, darn near broke Rosalind the first year that we did budgeting by priorities, and I appreciate your She's resiliency tough. and uh, the great work of your team mm -hmm. because it is a more transparent, accountable way of talking about the budget. And while the final document that we're going to approve comes in that uh, mm -hmm. F-195 gibberish that the state <laughs> prefers, um, the transparency, I think there's opportunities for us to continue to use plain talk to describe the budget, but we've come a long ways in the last six years, and I appreciate all the hard work. And that's why you've been receiving national awards and recognition, mm -hmm. because it is a best practice that hardly anybody does, because it's really hard. But I, as someone who sits up here responsible for the expenditure, for expenditure of our dollars, I appreciate the way that you're accounting for them. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 <coughs> all those opposed? Seeing none, motion passes 5-0. This brings us to item number 14, which is other business. However, there is no other business item, so we'll go on to 15, which is report to the board, 15.1, levy overview. Well, good evening for the local levy report. I just. Uh, intend to provide you with a very brief introductory overview around what is to come. Uh, we are uh, preparing and positioning ourselves to potentially provide you with a ballot resolution for two four-year levies for our expiring levies. One is for the basic education support, which was formerly called the Educational Programs and Operations Levy, which is what currently supports 20% of our, our work. Uh, it will be converted to a title called enrichment levy. The other is the capital levy, 
uh, school technology improvements, schools, school improvements, uh, excuse me, system improvements, and equipment replacement are covered under the capital levy for technology. Uh, just a very brief levy history. In 2014, we asked our voters to approve these two measures. Incredible pass rates for the um, EPO, a 67% pass rate, and for our technology levy, a 66% pass rate. We had asked for $86 million over four years, or over each of four years, for the educational programs and operations levy, $10 million per year for four years for the technology. Our uh, EPO program is used for educational programs, teachers, instructional aides, librarians, athletics, arts and music, textbooks, classroom materials, and a plethora of other items. Uh, a very important uh, funding source for the district. Our school technology improvements have been used for capital technology, upgrades to meet current system needs, uh, including things like my time, our, our Lawson system, our, our enterprise resource planning systems, as well as uh, meeting the needs of students as far as technological concerns are. Our levy history, uh, cost per $1,000 of assessed value for the educational programs oper and operations. It's actually declined uh, over the last four years, or over the last two years and the next two years. $4.61 down to $3.81 approximately. We don't know what our assessed value will be for the 2018 year yet. And then for the school technology improvements, we started out at $0.54 cents per thousand, and we've gone down to approximately $0.44 cents per thousand or at least that's what we're anticipating. Uh, just for informational purposes, our requirements to pass a levy are 50% voter approval. And incidentally, the, the average home value in Tacoma, I'm gonna go back a slide real quick. The average home value in Tacoma for 2016 was $223,000. So for 2016, uh, it was a $963 tax bill for the average homeowner on the educational programs and operations levy and $111 uh, tax bill on the technology levy. We have had some pretty significant legislative changes as it relates to the educational programs and operations levy. It will now be considered an enrichment levy per state law and will only be able to be used to enrich the basic education program. Beginning with collections in 2019, the formula for calculating the levy will change to either a $1.50 per thousand or $2,500 per student, whichever is less. In Tacoma, that currently equates to the $1.50 per thousand, which is approximately $33 to $35 million, depending on our assessed value for next year. State property tax will be increased to offset those state revenues, the, or to offset our revenues, and they'll be collected by the state and distributed out to school districts. That tax will be an $0.82 cents per thousand tax rate on all homes in the state. An additional requirement by the law now is that OSPI, the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction, will have to weigh in on our levy expenditures and that the state auditors will have to <coughs> review our plan to ensure that we are spending based on how we've indicated. Just as a highlight about what it means to have an enrichment levy, uh, the current budget bill defines enrichment as supplementation beyond the state's minimum instructional offerings, prototypical allocations, and program offerings. So it's only for those things with which the state doesn't currently provide us funding for. Now, the state's definition of basic education is rather loose. Uh, they do have a prototypical funding model that provides us with allocations of X number of teachers, X number of counselors per a prototypical school, uh, but we offer services in many cases far beyond that. Uh, as an example for our teacher, we currently carry 197 teacher contracts beyond what the state funds. Other permitted activities under the enrichment definition include extracurricular, extended days and extended year programs, early learning programs, and they, we can use those, uh, the enrichment levy for additional salaries beyond those that are currently being funded by the state uh, and other activities that OSPI determines. <laughs> We're not really sure what that means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Madam President, ask a question. Director Bial, please. I'm going back, you know, this is a mess, obviously, that's a nice way of putting it, but, um, you know, the, the approval of the of OSPI on the expenditures, the state auditor's office to add audit the plan, has there been any additional funds put in their budget to hire staff? The state auditor normally does not look at 295 school districts within a year 
they do it unless they're big like us. They normally look at every four on the four year on the four year cycle. So who's going to pay for that? You know, uh, we will. We will. That's what I wanted to make <laughs> that right. point clear. So that's, that's right. going to come out of our. Those are billable hours. Billable Great. hours. Do we have any idea what that would be? What's our billable hour rate now? I, I should know that, but I forgot. Um, we spend close to one hundred thousand dollars on our, uh, state our annual auditors. audit. Our annual audit. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how many hours it's going to take to review our levy expenditures and then identify whether we're expending appropriately. Uh, I would imagine the cleaner we audit, uh, uh, the cleaner we account for it, the less we will have to worry about it. Uh, but it, I would say at least 10 to 15 hours of state auditor time. Thank you. I just wanted to make that point clear. This is another one of those the legislature gave us something then took away. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, current levy needs around our technology. Uh, if we continue doing the work that we're doing now, uh, the technology levy will provide for life cycle support of systems and technology infrastructure, enhance training and integration of tools and technology opportunities in the classroom, update student and staff technology to meet evolving needs of the student, and also continuous advancement of technology, that never ending cycle of what comes next in the technology realm, and finally to provide 24-7 staff and student support. As a brief outline, uh, the timeline that we're looking at for August through October, we will uh, spend some time, and we have been spending some time, working on developing a communication strategy and working on a public needs wants survey. This is uh, currently in progress. We have also got a draft resolution with our bond council currently making some adjustments to that, and we will be able to present that to you at our upcoming study session. At some point, we will need to share with OSPI what our levy plan is. And then we will have study sessions to let you know what the options and opportunities for us to move forward are, and a public hearing, of course, on the levy. We intend to adopt a resolution no later than November 9th. I think that we could probably push it to late November, but for a safety measure, we want to do November 9th. Uh, we are required to file the resolution with Pierce County. I believe that date is December 15th. That could be an error. I haven't checked the most recent updates, but uh, we want to try and target for the first week in December for safety practices. And then ballots will be mailed January 26th, election date February 13th, resolution, uh, I'm sorry, results would be certified February 23rd. So our next steps that we want to make you aware of are on September 21st, first we intend to have a board study session with you where we will continue to review those levy law changes, what we believe will make, um, what we believe will be allowed within our levy based on the changes that the state has made, and uh, evaluate the impacts of a four-year, I say four-year legislation, but it's the four-year cycle of the levy replacement, and review the draft of the levy resolution. On the 28th meeting, at least we're targeting at this point, to determine what activities will be uh, sent off to OSPI, hopefully do a first reading of the resolution and possibly a public hearing, and then in October, we would need to have an adoption and a public hearing. So that is just to give you a heads up, uh, let you know where we're at, provide the public with some information on what's to come, and I would be happy to take any questions. Questions from the board? Director Winsco. I just want to say, I'm going to be gone on the 21st of September. So if I could have a meeting with you or somebody else uh, just to go over that, um, I would appreciate it. Sure. So I just looked at a bunch of si slides and wrote down comments and questions without any reference to the slide number, so bear with me. Sure. Um, there's the question of the money being funneled, funneled back to TPS. And I have this feeling that there's a lot of uh, regulations around the way that can be funneled and expended. Do we, do we know what those are yet? Have they been fully mm -hmm. defined? I don't think that anything is fully defined as it relates to the way the state budget came out, uh, except for maybe the 17, 18 year, but those future years are rather ambiguous at this point. Um, what I would say is the money that we intend to get back, uh, we're seeing has some strings attached to it. So as an example, We'll no longer be able to use local dollars in the same for fashion, but we've been allocated additional CTE dollars or additional LAP dollars. Uh, I'm not going to say that the dollars that we have currently expended in our local um, local expenditures necessarily translate over to CTE or LAP dollars, and so it makes it more difficult to find space within the budget to be able to cover the expenses that we currently have, right. which could put pressure on the rest of the budget to have to make tough decisions about what programs we may or may not want to keep. Right. Director Hines. 
Do we have plans to meet with our state legislative delegation during the interim and or members of the House and Senate Education Committees? Because there seems to be a lot of, well, we didn't know that was going to happen when we passed this law. And it seems like the interim may be a great opportunity for us to ground truth what they've done and get them front loaded for the 18 legislative session. Yeah, so we've worked uh, with our uh, governmental affairs uh, council and, and to start to develop a strategy. I think to be fair to everyone, um, OSPI, the, the staff, um, most of this has come very quickly. So people are still trying to figure out what is the truth and what's not the truth. Uh, we have had uh, several legislators from even across the state reach out to us uh, and uh, set up meetings to understand how our numbers are different than what we're shared with them to start with. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be working aggressively uh, over the next few months to ground truth, uh, to share what we're seeing, what we're not seeing. Um, other districts across the state are in a similar situation, um, so we're not alone. And so we know that they are also working, and so we're working with them to make sure that we're understanding it the same way that they're understanding it. So lots of heavy work. Uh, and then there's an opportunity, I think, uh, you folks uh, annually create a legislative agenda with priorities. Um, mm -hmm. There may be an opportunity there to also influence or set direction for the staff and based on the information you have. And, and I see this as it's multifaceted. So we mm -hmm. set the legislative agenda for the upcoming legislative session. Mm -hmm. I think we need to take advantage of the interim, uh, particularly because members have more availability during mm -hmm. the interim than they do during the legislative session. And I have been Unfortunately, uh, well, I'm disappointed with the outcome, particularly when the response back from a number of legislators has been, we had no idea. Yeah. If you had no idea, then why didn't you better involve districts and local school boards rather mm -hmm. than behind closed doors coming up with something? Uh, and I'm also interested to see how uh, the Supreme Court weighs in because we still haven't heard, does this meet the intent of the Supreme Court? And based on their past uh, reasoning and rationale, I don't think that it's going to. And I'd like to help those legislators be successful so that our district can be successful. And I appreciate the letter that uh, Superintendent Santorno sent out on behalf mm -hmm. of the district because that accurately represents, we'd have been better off if they had done nothing at home. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fact that we're now, they think they've fixed it and we're now scrambling to try to determine how we're gonna go forward is a problem and I think we can get to resolution. Uh, but if they feel like they've solved the problem, they're going to move on to the next issue. We have to remind them, no, there's still work to be done. And I think like we always do, we offer to help. Mm -hmm. We don't just point out problems and complain. We point out opportunities to make things better. Mm -hmm. And then we offer our assistance to help make them better. Thank you. Thank you. I Dr. think I yeah. might be able to add to what you're asking. I've had some conversations with Charlie Brown over the last two weeks and been home. And um, we are have these most already set this in motion. When Carla's letter was sent out, Andy Billick, contacted him, who's the chair of the Senate Ways and Means Committee, almost immediately from Spokane and said, oops. The other thing that we found out is there's, and this to me is almost unprecedented over the years that I've been involved in budget process, there are two sets of numbers. OSPI has a lower set than the legislature, and they've got to get together and figure out what is the baseline. Always, in my experiences, is that baseline has been set by the Office of Financial Management, then everybody works off of that. And so that's part of that. A lot of that stuff happened right at the end of session. For example, the dollar fifty per thousand, I and mean, that really hurts a district of our size. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was done. I've been down there in my, in my days when I was a governor's legislative person out of OFM to know that some awful screwball things happen sometimes at the end of session. And this was some. This was to get different pressure. Um, Charlie worked hard and I know one of our legislators and I think he and I said do you want me to talk to him and he said no I think they understand called him and was said they were mad at him and I said what did you say and he said no you should not be mad at me you should be mad at your staff because every time we went to the staff they told us you're gonna be all right so it was just like you're saying director Hines but we are gonna work our absolute heads off tails off whatever during that interim to make them understand we're also going to engage the governor's office who has been very quiet on all this whole mess mm -hmm. and um, they're going to know that we're around and we fortunately have other uh, school districts as Dr. Garcia mentioned that 
large school districts. And this isn't the first time, by the way. This is almost one of those Yogi Berra, you know, deja vu all over again deals because they did the same thing in 1983. And Tacoma schools lost a significant amount of levy dollars, as did Seattle and so on. So the next year they came back and created the grandfather group, which I have a feeling that may very well happen again. So um, I am somewhat optimistic in that we're going to be heard. We have to be heard. If you look at the majority, we're probably looking at 500,000 kids that will be affected by this when you add the big school districts, over half the kids in the state of Washington. And they, they need to, they will listen. And it's also, I hate to say, uh, it's an election year, and I think they need to listen. Um, but I, I, like you and Director Eshka, uh, I was astounded by the fact that some of our legislative people were not engaged as much as I thought they would have been in this discussion. And maybe it's a wake-up call for all of them now and rally around. And one thing I was disturbed at at the end of the, and I think I mentioned this to a couple of you, that I saw this budget becoming a budget that had been about children becoming a budget about adults when it came to the funding source. And I think we need to get our legislators and, the, uh, and hopefully the governor's office. We have um, a lot of credibility in Olympia as a school district because of our awards, what we've done in our graduation rates and so on. They do listen and I think they will listen now because uh, if you look at, you know, the potential for this could be, I'm gonna use the word, Director Eshka, catastrophic to us as a district if we lose the amount of money that we possibly could. If you look at the difference between what we would raise with a new levy at 35 million dollars versus the 87 or 88 we would be going out for and I've looked at those numbers and they we do not get the backfill of that between there so this is you know we're talking about not just us Seattle's in the same boat Spokane uh, that that is not something I do not see the Supreme Court allowing to happen to the children in this state and I don't and I hopefully the public will get behind us when they understand it too and they say for once, let's be about the kids of this state and let's quit partisan. My own personal comments, quit, quit the partisan bickering and let's go do the job we should have done 40 years ago. So thank you. Hopefully thank you, that Director helps Dan. add a little bit more to the mm -hmm. conversation of where it is. I want to echo the frustrations heard by my peers on the board here tonight. Uh, my lack of use of the word catastrophic is because I am going to hold out hopes that we are going to solve this before we experience tremendous impacts. Um, that being said, I would request that we look at scheduling time on the calendars uh, because they do get difficult to mm -hmm. match up. Uh, mm -hmm. I also know that uh, school funding is something that is extraordinarily complex. People try to simplify it, but it is not simple. When you put right. a few more restrictions on a district at our size, the amount of work and effort to put that through has a tremendous impact mm -hmm. on outcomes that we can produce. By outcomes, I mean actually educating students so that they have a quality of life that we want in our city. Um, so those are real lives that we're affecting. Um, so I think I would like to be able to spend time with our legislators kind of walking them through some of what we're mm -hmm. spending and how this impacts us specifically so that we're, they're empowered with that knowledge. They're all uh, professionals that have uh, expertise in certain areas, but I don't know that any one of them right now is a tremendous expert on school funding in particular. Um, so I would really like to make sure that they're crystal clear on where we stand and know that we are here uh, again to advocate and to provide information as they need it as a, a, a really an exemplary district throughout the state, in my not so humble opinion, quite frankly. So if we could just make sure that we get the, the, okay. the schedules rolling, mm -hmm. that would be great. I also wanna make sure it's on the schedule so that they know <laughs> that we care. So uh, that being said, are there other questions? Thank you very much for your report. I know that this is a, a, a wonderful end of the summer thing for your entire <laughs> team to be working through as well, and we appreciate that as, as much too. Yeah. Um, another mountain to climb, and of course you've climbed it with uh, breathlessly. Um, are there any other questions or comments from the board? Okay, thank you very, oh, nope. Oh. Thank you very much for that report. <laughs> uh, we're gonna move on now to item number 16, which is board comments and reports. Um, we'll begin with Director Vial. Thank you, only comment I have is I've received several real positive comments from a num number of parents about our Jumpstart, mm -hmm. from kindergarten up to the middle mm -hmm. school about how uh, you know, uh, new families in our neighborhood, but awesome and 
uh, I live in a on a block that went from four kids now to 17 in the last six months. So they're all enrolling in, in Number Room Jump Starts. They said, what a great program, Number Room from Auto District, and kids aren't scared, and they went up to Geiger for kindergarten, and one went to Truman, and so on. And I think it, it just validates when we started that program to me that the kids are going to start school in another week and know what's up and what's going on, and the jitters are gone, and the uh, Anyway, kudos to our, our staff and our superintendent and who uh, thought that we ought to be doing this. We started it three years and now we're doing it at all levels of transition, high school and the bridge program for the AP stuff. And, and you know, that's some of the things, quite frankly, another editorial current, we do spend our, our levy dollars on and our preschool. So anyway, that's my comment. So that's a positive one. So I, I it was probably 10 or 12 people and some other people from around the district text me and said, awesome, great deal. Thank you, Director Val. Mm -hmm. Director Hines. Yeah, piggybacking on that, I do find it, uh, I'll, I'll just finish my rant and then I'll move on to something else, but I do find <laughs> it interesting that the items that we can fairly confidently directly attribute mm -hmm. to the success, the increased success of our students are not a part of the definition mm -hmm. of basic education, that they fall under enrichment. And so perhaps we need to get away from this antiquated definition of basic education and redefine what a 21st century education looks like and what those components and delivery methods and exposures are. And I would love to see us use that as a starting point uh, awesome. rather than have to convince uh, OSPI or someone else to approve our enrichment activities. We're data driven and we've got evidence and I think that should be where we start the conversation. I will get off that soapbox. And I love the uh, community budget survey that we have on the website. How do we plan to share that information publicly so that people realize that it doesn't just go off into cyberspace somewhere, that we're grateful for the time they take to fill that out and then how it can help to inform our future decisions? Christy? I actually Come up to the mic. Mm -hmm. Christy. I've actually been going through, there's about 130 responses and um, A, B, C, D, and I've been going through actually detailed reading every single one and categorizing by department of how they, and I plan to share those out with those departments. And um, as far as publicly, we haven't gotten that far yet, but we're definitely taking those into consideration and looking at, uh, I am reading every single one of them, so and, and going to share it with the teams. That's great. I think there's a tremendous opportunity in collaboration with uh, the PIO's office to do another push. We're back to school. People may not have been thinking about schools and budgets, but now that we get people back into schools and buildings, is there a way for us to drive out participation in the survey? 138, I appreciate those 138 people in a district of our size. That is a fraction. And then it's great that we're hearing that information is being shared internally, but to let the members of the public know, and I think this, when we talk about the climate survey that we have been hindered in the past because people have no idea what happens mm -hmm. once they submit the form. And I think if there's a lack of relevance mm -hmm. to participation, it it's going to limit participation. So I, I think there's a great opportunity to have a two-pronged approach. Let's do one last push of, hey, we're back to school. Uh, the budget processes are seemingly year-round, so we've approved one budget and we'll get to work starting to think about the next budget. So soliciting, actively soliciting their input and then sharing it back, I think would be um, uh, a very positive outcome of their participation. Thank you. Director Lansky. I don't have any comments today. Thank you. Vice President Cobb. I don't have any comments either. I just want to piggyback, though, on Director, I guess it is a comment, <laughs> Heinz's comment related to the survey. Um, I think sharing back to the community kind of a summary of what they submitted mm -hmm. would be a great thing. But then it makes me go one step further, and this is like a future ask, and, if, and it's, it sounds like I think it is a lot of work. But I thought that reading through the specific proposals um, was very interesting mm -hmm. and answered some questions that I hear from community members sometimes in particular like what are we doing to close racial and ethnic opportunity gaps mm -hmm. you'd have to read through a lot of that detail to get to it but there are some common themes like improving mm -hmm. instruction or like professional learning or closing gaps that kind of mm -hmm. pop out in lots of those um, priority and goal areas so almost makes me think that in the same vein of K-12 
categorizing the responses like it seems like you've already done. It would be really nice to have a few kind of sub areas within our goals so that we could kind of display differently what's the multi-pronged approach to closing gaps or what's the multi-pronged approach to uh, engaging mm -hmm. families or what's the multi-pronged approach to partnerships. And I know that's a lot another level of coding and data but it would just be really nice to be able to mm -hmm kind of mm -hmm. almost cross-tab our goal areas. Yeah, yep. because they do cross-tab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. good idea. Great, thank okay. you. Um, I have a couple comments. Uh, I, I just have to piggyback on Director Hines in terms of basic education. I feel like the state has been arguing basic education in one committee, blue ribbon, green ribbon, something else since before I ever moved here, since before my children entered school and they've both graduated you now. Were born. So, so I don't really want to send it back to figure out basic education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want them to give us the flexibility that we need mm -hmm. to do the job that we know yep. how to do. Um, there's a micromanagement level that's about accountability, mm -hmm. but there's ways to do accountability without tying the hands of the people that are doing the work. Um, and so that's the end of my soapbox for there because those are the, that's the rest of my kind words on that subject tonight. Um, I do want to give you a couple updates uh, and questions. One, just to put it out there, I think that a few of us have received this email. Um, typically, Director Vial has been going to Cube and we need somebody to be able to replace her mm -hmm. um, at that in that conference. Just I, I for this one conference. For this one conference. Little so issues I've had, I can't fly for. We about don't, four yeah, or five we don't, and we don't need to discuss that yeah, right now. But I just wanted to make sure that since we're all here, that we put that yeah, out there because yeah. it is a place that's important for I us to be represented. Mm -hmm. um, Can I, I just sure add to that, that? Given the fact that we're the current National Board of Excellence, I would like to make sure that one of us at least attends. Yep. And I'm sorry I can't because, um, anyway, we, we've made a lot of pro you know we've become a prominent member of Cube. So thank you, Director Eskin. I I really apologize for. Um, not being able to attend this year. I won't accept um, your apology because it's not needed. Okay. Um, we will do our best to fill your shoes in that presence and make sure that we are represented as well Great, as you have, thank have you. led that representation. And, so, so. Um, and it's in New Orleans, by the way, mm -hmm. so that might be kind of, if that might be enticing to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing that I want to talk about, I was at a meeting for the Imagine East Side update. Mm -hmm. um, so that is well underway. The dirt's being moved, the pool. Mm -hmm. Concrete's going to start being poured mm -hmm. next week, um, which is going to be kind of a neat thing to see. I sort of hope they videotape it because it's a massive project. Mm -hmm. If you like that sort of thing, it kind of goes back to playing with my brother's dump trucks when I was a little girl, right? Um, but anyway, there's a, a an event in September. I believe it's the 23rd. It's, it's the 23rd. We go yeah, on a Saturday day. that's mm -hmm. uh, celebrating that construction project. So. I would encourage you all to participate because it is a tremendous thing that we've done with that partnership there. And as it evolves as a, a full campus, it's going to be a game changer um, for the city of Tacoma as it helps enhance that area mm -hmm. of town and gives new opportunities. And just personally, thank you for all of your support individually along the way on this. It's been some heavy lifting that we've done as a full team and also my great mm -hmm. gratitude to staff. Um, and I say that simply because I, I live close to it. The impact is going to be something that I see in my daily drive around, if that makes sense. Um, I also want to give a thanks to the district for some help that we worked with the community member on some uh, homeless activity just outside the fence of Bose near a, a community garden. And it was hard to get traction when we got the district involved. Uh, they worked with TPD and it was solved like instantaneously. So that was fantastic work and um, mm -hmm. uh, the district is in a place to do some mowing that was, was going to free up a neighbor Saturday that they were doing outside of a district fence every Saturday all summer long. So God bless her for her volunteerism. And I'm glad that with the work of uh, all of our collective impact from collective work of the district facility, she's gonna get her Saturday mornings back in the meantime. Um, also, I don't know if you recall, uh, at some point there was some discussion about 40th Street on the other side of Blix and concerns about whether or not we could bring a road through for, mm -hmm. uh, for bus pass through. I live off 40th, so I get to see this construction more than you ever want to know. I'm not going to bother washing my car till it's done, so there's my excuse. <laughs> um, but there is a road that goes through, so I mm -hmm. think that whether or not we use that area next to ours, it's going to be very easy now for buses or for staff or for parents to loop around beside it. I'm saying that without seeing the final city project mm -hmm. or if it's paved, but it certainly is a roadway. Um, so that was good news as well. I love seeing stuff like that. Um, could, could I ask you a question about Blix? Because I know that 
on the traffic study and you know I'm familiar with that I worked there a lot about whether or not there should actually be a light rather than that crosswalk with a blinker that is a very scary place for crossing you've already had accidents and as you come over the hill and drop down on 38 you and I discussed that before There's like we have at Franklin and at DeLong do you do you have any update on that um, there is constant concern about that uh, crosswalk from Blix and the community over there. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that they're on the Safe Schools Route grant list, and I'm looking at the superintendent. C can you give us an update or send us an update in the Friday report on which schools are under that new grant yeah. from uh, mm -hmm. for Safe Routes to Schools? That would be nice. I, I'd, um, I'd there's like been some debates. That. I'm not sure if they're on it because there's been some de debates based on individuals' personal experience versus traffic studies. Um, I can tell you from an experience that uh, sometimes there's those traffic studies, but when you walk out there, it takes the naked eye to see that it's clearly dangerous. Yeah. Um, and so it, sometimes we need to bring those two things together. But yeah, so no no specific okay. action right now that I know of unless it's on I didn't on mean that to list. interrupt, but you and I had had a conversation about that a while ago, and I yeah. wondered about... I, my, my guess is that turn spot is also going to help alleviate that because it gives people a place to go um, mm -hmm. besides the, the just main, turning in that the traffic. Main problem had been as you start over the hill you know Blix is right there as you're coming east on 38th as you well know and it's a blind spot Absolutely. yeah it is a very blind spot and that's also a crossing for the kids and mm -hmm. and having you know lived in this city long enough to know what happened at DeLong and what happened at Franklin where it was the same similar situations and two children lost their lives and that's why the the lights are there that you know, I would hate to see history repeat itself um, because a traffic study says one thing, but sometimes a traffic study doesn't measure. Mm -hmm. You run over the, the the thing in the road and it tells you how many cars are coming, and it doesn't necessarily tell you know you that that is a blind spot in, in that. Doesn't thing. tell you that they keep coming even though there's a kid in the middle of the street. I know, uh, I you know. Can't and, pick up those little and even where you so. have a light, you know, the, I don't know if the long is on there, but. Uh, someone came barreling down there about a week ago coming down from Stevens and that is another drop and I guess the light was red and they slammed the brakes on and went in through a fence and took the front porch off a house mm. on the uh, north side of the street so that is a, another area and I don't know if that was on the someone said to me well it has a light and I said yeah but it needs to have a flasher because you don't realize the school is there the sign isn't very big and the flashers don't need to be going for the whole, you know, only when the kids are and so on. So I, I was like to push for that because even though that light was there, and thank God it wasn't on a school time, they have set that uh, light there so that it slows traffic down coming both directions on 12th. But I thought, well, that was a nice thing. Thank God none of the kids were there when that car, because it went across where the crosswalk was and hit a house right there. And So anyway, we have some work to do. So Jane, I will, I'm sorry. Yeah. go ahead. I was just going to say that JMAP um, has called their next, their meeting on September 8th to be about uh, safe routes to schools, mm -hmm. and okay. I know that we have a, that I'm going to go, and we have a district representative that's been working with them to come to, so I'll, um, I'll do a Friday report after we have that, after I get the information from that meeting. Okay, cool. So I suppose I'll be at that meeting with you, so that'll oh, yeah, be good for me. Be. That's good. Um, and, for, and Vice yeah, President Cobb as well. So. Uh, so, with gratitude to the City of Tacoma for partnership oh, yeah. for uh, uh, safe routes to school and making sure that we have mapping for safe to all kids, I will end my report board report at this point, and I see that Director Hines would like to make an additional well, comment. Well, I was just going to add that uh, I serve on the School Traffic Safety Committee. Thank you. Uh, I forgot. Uh, I'm, I'm so Council sorry. Councilmember Toms, uh, mm -hmm. he and I are the elected representatives of that committee. It's comprised of district and city staff. And these are the exact sort of issues that we discuss. And the city of Tacoma uh, has taken the lead on the Safe Routes to School grant. Mm -hmm. So there's that piece. We have a committee meeting next week. So I will get an update on that as well to help supplement the information okay. that the superintendent okay. pushes forward. Uh, and then in the uh, city council's uh, budget that they passed, there's money for uh, infrastructure for about a dozen schools. Mm -hmm. Those beacons and other pieces are rolling out. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So you're going to see that around the city. Um, they're going in the ground, I believe, as we speak. And then in addition to that, the city is going to be doing targeted uh, motor unit patrols for the enforcement side of things to remind people it's the right thing to do. And if you disobey the law, uh, you're going to get a ticket. 
and I think there's opportunity for the district to look at partnership with the city on some educational pieces through website, micro-targeting on social media, those sorts of things to try to get it in the hands of the people in those neighbors, neighborhoods because sometimes we only use parents and peach jar and those sorts of things, but the majority of the community doesn't have kids in the school. So I think there's great things happening uh, around safe routes to school to get some, we've done traffic studies and those help, but that's a data point. It's not the only data point there. Sometimes you, you can't see and that's not reflected in a traffic study. So there's good work being done uh, and I will make certain to provide more frequent updates at board meetings on the work of that committee. And I want to apologize for not acknowledging or even remembering your hard work on that. We're sitting here today because of the hard work mm -hmm. that you've done on behalf of this board with uh, Councilman Toms, and I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And given that you've given us this information, I have a question. As they <laughs> increase those traffic uh, enforcement officers, are they therefore increasing the police budget to do that, or are they going to be taking it away from other activities? I will respectfully refer that to my colleagues on the City Council. Thank you so much. That'd be a good thing to know. <laughs> okay, are there any other further uh, just comments one, or Just one questions? comment on that. They run them out, those enforcements. They'll do it on 12th. Pardon me? They, they'll run the enforcements out and they'll do it like on 12th for DeLong, but they're only there for a short period of time. Makes an impact maybe for a week, you'll see it, and then people are back to the normal speed through there of 30, 35. <laughs> Sure, sure. You know, I, I don't know if well, you probably are aware, actually, but specifically when they did reductions a few years ago, the things that were cut were traffic enforcement oh, it was, and, I um, know. and the gang I know. unit and some other such units. So I know, and I know what you're saying. We, and what I'm saying is they're only they're a short-term effective measure, and they don't carry right. forward. And I really appreciate the police that come out there, and they really oh, you, they'll absolutely. have them lined up coming on 12th in the morning down there. And but point being is it it's a short-term and. The, Police officers will tell you that they'd like to be out there more often, but they're pulled from all over the city. You know, I think yeah. a couple a couple high dollar tickets on behalf of citizens, and they remember the next time. Um, and I hate to say that because I don't really want people to have that impact, but it's uh, a matter of making sure that people are trained. And remember so, that but they don't back get, in session. They don't get everybody's the point. So, absolutely, Director good. Hines. Well, I don't want to belabor the point, but it's, there's good conversation. So we yeah. have talked the potentially about yeah. some sort of a camera program. Yes. Where 100 percent of the revenue generated would be reinvested back into the safety program. Ah. So the motorcycles are there, and I'm on my best behavior. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're not there today. They're not there this week. They haven't been there in a month. Mm -hmm but the camera is always there. Actually, and I know in the past there's been concerns about, oh, well, you're going to generate revenue that goes back mm -hmm. into the general fund, but the idea of looking at models where mm -hmm. it would be specifically earmarked to be reinvested for education, for signage, for other infrastructure, mm -hmm. for enforcement, mm -hmm. because the end goal is not to raise revenue, it's to keep kids and, yeah, kids and families from getting run over. That is essentially how they made parking fly in downtown, was making sure that it was going just back to parking and yeah. not overcharging, but making sure that it paid for the system. You know, we actually did a pilot project when I was mayor on that, and then the city didn't continue it, and it was effective, mm -hmm. very effective. With the, they had little things out on the street out there with cameras and the school zones, and, and then, you know, things changed, and they, they didn't continue it, but it was effective. So maybe that's something we can support as a, as a board through the council a resolution or something mm -hmm. asking them to, to do that. Absolutely. So it's been a tremendous 1617 and now we're rolling up our sleeves mm -hmm. so the last week of breathing easy before school starts and all the hard work and excitement begins. So um, before I go on to announcements of future board meetings, I just want to wish everybody the best of luck and thank them in advance for all the hard work they're doing to make those first days um, really meaningful and engaging for our students. Um, which brings me to item number 17, which is the announcement of future board meetings. Um, in September, we'll meet on September 14th for a regular business meeting here in this room at 6 p.m. We'll meet for a study session also in this room on the 21st at 6 p.m. We have a meeting on Thursday, September 28th, with also a regular business meeting, also 6 p.m., also in this room. Item number 18, there is no executive session, which moves us to adjournment. And as this is a regular scheduled business meeting and there's no further business before us, I thereby adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.